As mentioned earlier, now I'm going to prove that the continuous image of a compact set is itself compact. And more formally stating it, it's theorem 3.10. It says that if E is a compact set, and the domain of a function f that happens to be continuous, then f of e is compact. So the continuous image means you're taking the image of e under the function f, which is continuous. The continuous image, which is f of e, is compact. And just a little bit of an explanation. Let's, uh, let's take a function something like A real easy one, a straight line. I think I kind of graphed it like it's f of x equals one half x, a slope of up one over two, maybe less than that, but something like that. Um, so let's go from one to two. I can tell my scale is going to be off here, but uh, actually, let's go from zero to two. So if our domain is the closed interval from zero to two, that's a compact set. So according to this theorem, f of this interval is going to be a compact set as well. And, and it's easy to see that it is. So from one, f of one, is one half, f of two is one, and every number between this height and this height are achieved by this function. So if my set E is equal to the closed interval zero to two, f of E is also a compact set, the closed interval from zero to one. So maybe without erasing anything, let's go from three, four, five. We'll go from three to six this time. And this time we'll do open intervals. Let's say that my, the domain, the region of this uh, domain is A, we'll call it. And it's the open interval from three to six. Well, as you might suspect, if you take, I can't take f of three, because it's not defined there. There's a hole in the graph there. Or, or the set A doesn't include the number three. That's a better way of saying it. And it does not, the set A does not include six. So this is gonna go from half of three, I should have gone from four, this is going to go from 3 over 2 up to half of 6, which is 3. So notice, this is not a compact set. It's bounded, but it's not closed. And f of a is of the same in regard to it's bounded, but it's not closed, so it's not compact. So this goes 3 over 2 to 3. So on this continuous, this is a, uh, on this continuous function, if we start with a compact set in a domain, the image is also going to be a compact set. All right, now let's prove the theorem. I'm going to use some, uh, quantifiers and maybe abbreviations because this I have quite a bit to write on the on the board. So let's just start off by saying E compact, which it is, comma F continuous, which it is, implies that F is uniformly continuous. And that was by theorem 3.8.
So now we've already established that F is uniformly continuous. Um, let's see, I'll start here, but F uniformly continuous and E bounded implies F of E is bounded. That's by theorem 3.9. So it sounds like we're halfway done. What we're trying to prove is that f of e, the image of f, under the set e, the domain e is compact. Well, we've already shown that f of e is bounded. Compact means closed and bounded. So all we need to do now is show that it's, uh, f of e is closed. So I'll write down to show f of e is compact it remains only to show f of e is closed we'll be done with the proof as soon as we do that well, the definition of a closed set is that it contains all of its accumulation points. So let's start off with an accumulation point of f of e, and then we will prove that it's actually contained in f of e. So let y0 or y0 uh, be an accumulation point of f of e. Well, going way back to chapter 1, by theorem 1.17, there must be a sequence, which I'll call yn, n going from 1 to infinity, in f of e minus y naught. Because remember, y naught is an accumulation point, so every interval around it contains infinitely many points of the set. So we've got this sequence, y ends, in f of e minus y naught, such that it converges to y naught y n converges to y naught. That's just what theorem 117 says for an accumulation point. All right, well, for each one of these y n's, there's an x n that maps to it. y1, there's an x1, f of x1 equaling y1. So let's, let me put this right here. Let x in be the sequence, sequence in the domain E, such that f of x in is equal to y in for all n. So now we have a sequence of x ins. Now they may not be convergent, the y n sequences are convergent to y not but we don't know anything about the convergence of x in. Well, x in is coming out of a bounded set. So it does have a convergent subsequence. So this sequence, I'm just gonna say, let x in k k going from 1 to infinity let that be a convergent subsequence of the x ends 
Remember why we know that? That's, that, that's a, a, a bolzano weierstrass theorem for sequences. If you have a bounded, every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. So that's what we've got here. X and K is a convergent subsequence. Since it's convergent, let's let X naught be the limit. The limit as N goes to infinity of F of X is actually going to be as K goes to infinity of f of x sub n k, the limit of that convergent subsequence. Well, since E is compact, since it's a compact set, we know that x naught is going to be in E. If we've got a sequence in E that's convergent, it converges to a number in E because since it's a closed sequence, compact implies closed and bounded, it contains all of its accumulation points. Since E is compact, X naught is in E. Actually, since E is compact, um, actually this, the reason for this is by the lemma, I'll say by the preceding lemma. All right, well, what does that mean? Since E is compact, X naught is in E, and we can say something about the sequence F of X in K, K going from one to infinity, it converges to F of X naught. That would be by, by theorem 3.1. Not sure if I have enough room out there, so I'm just gonna write by Theorem 3.1, right there. But another way of writing this, that's that this subsequence, but f of x in k, k going from 1 to infinity, is equal to y in k, k going from 1 to infinity. And this converges to y naught. Now the justification for that is easy because the sequence y in converges to y naught. We have a convergent sequence. Every single subsequence will converge to the same number. We saw that back in chapter one. So that means that these numbers are the same. The two I put the, the squares around. And so y naught is equal to f of x naught which is an element of f of e. And that, I'll put a comma and say, therefore, f of e is closed. Therefore, f of e is closed. And in parentheses, if you want to say, and compact, that would be, uh, that'd be, that'd be worthwhile to do. We're trying to prove that F of E is compact. We showed very early that it was bounded. F of E was bounded. So then the only thing remaining to prove that it was compact was that F of E is closed, which we just did.